Hello, my name's Tim Friel, and I'm going to talk to you about how we maintain good posture in the dental chair. I'm going to look at three things separately. The first thing is how we adjust the dentist chair. Now, when we want to sit back in the dentist chair, we should be sitting so that our undersurface of our thighs are parallel with the floor and the top surface of our thighs will be slightly pointing downwards. So this chair is actually slightly too low for me. Chairs should be height adjustable, so the, thighs, the top surface of the thighs are slightly pointing downwards and the undersurface of the thighs should be parallel with the floor. The second thing to note when sitting in the chair is that we should sit backwards, okay, with our shoulders back and relaxed. There's always a tendency when we're treating patients that we want to lean forwards. Uh, and that just introduces stress on the lower back in particular. And it means also that we cause damage to the shoulder. Sitting back and being relaxed also allows us to be much more skillful as dentists. And that's a difficult skill to learn. Once we've adjusted the dentist chair, the next thing that we need to do is to adjust the patient chair so that we can maintain a good posture. For most procedures in operative dentistry, we want to have the patient fully reclined. There will be some times where we want to use different positions, and I'll be talking about these later. One of the big problems that people make is that they don't actually recline the chair fully enough, and this means that we don't get adequate direct vision to the patient. Most chairs these days are programmable, and that means that we can actually set the position to what we want to use. Um, I'm going to use the program switch just to recline the mannequin head so that we can see the sort of position we might end up with. Some patients won't want to recline this quickly, particularly if they're anxious. So it can be helpful in these situations to recline the chair slowly in stages rather than in, in one go. And often it's helpful to put a reassuring hand on the top of the head so that the patient doesn't get the feeling that they're going to fall out of the back of the chair. Reclining the patient to this degree actually is not enough. I can actually see the front surfaces of the top teeth and the lower teeth, but I won't actually get access to the back of the mouth. The only way that I'll be able to see to the back of the mouth is if I start to lean forward, which is something that we want to avoid. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the foot pedal to get the patient appropriately reclined. Now again, if you look at this, it looks like the patient is far too far back. In fact, the chair is really only just flat, and it's similar to what they would, most patients would lie in a bed at night. So most patients will be able to cope with this comfortably. There will be some patients, however, who will not be able to recline this far back, and we may need to make special circumstances for them. Now that I've got the patient appropriately reclined, obviously they're far too low for my working position. So we need to bring the base of the chair up so that I can maintain good posture. And what I'm doing is I'm bringing the base of the chair up so that uh, I will be able to work with my forearms slightly raised. It also allows me to get underneath the chair so that I can get much closer to the patient. And very often when we talk about working with the patient, we talk about assuming uh, various positions on a clock face. And this is typically referred to as the 11 o'clock position, because if we imagine this to be the, the positions on a clock face, I might be considered to be at 11 o'clock to the patient. And this is the normal position that we will work in for most operative procedures. Sometimes we'll need to adjust the chair according to uh, what we're doing. Notably, if we're working on the lower front teeth. In these situations, we can actually have the patient more upright, and this gives us direct vision to the patient. So I can move the chair up and bring the base down. Again, I want to work with my forearms slightly raised, elbows tucked in, and shoulders back and relaxed. But now I can see directly onto the lower front teeth, and I will be able to work on these teeth without actually needing to use the mirror. Sometimes we're going to actually do treatment for the patient while we're standing and the patient is semi-reclined, most notably if we're taking teeth out or if we're doing impressions for dentures. 
In these situations, we're going to end up putting more stress on our back. But again, the same principles still apply. You want to have the patient at a suitable height so that you can work with your elbows tucked in and your forearms slightly raised. And also, you want to uh, avoid prolonged periods where you're leaning over the patient because this is going to put more stress on your back. So for example, if I were doing an impression of the patient, I could work comfortably either from behind the patient or from in front with, my, with the patient more or less at the correct height. If we're taking teeth out, then you usually want to be working on the same side of the patient's mouth that you're taking the tooth out from. Because we're going to actually introduce some bad posture, in these situations it's important to actually make sure that you don't work for prolonged periods in bad positions and also that you appropriately stretch your back at the end of the session to actually uh, avoid tension. Okay, so we have the dentist chair adjusted appropriately. We've got the patient chair adjusted so that we can actually get good vision to the mouth. Now we can actually have a look at how we use the mirror and look around the mouth. The first thing to note is of course that using working in a mirror is unnatural and there's always a tendency to want to avoid it. Now, in some situations we don't need to use the mirror and wherever possible we can actually hold the mirror in the palm grip and just flip it up out of the way so that we've got it available when we need to use it. If we're working on the labial surfaces of the front teeth then we can actually use direct vision. We don't need to have the mirror but it's there for us when we need it. If we're working on buccal surfaces of left and right then we can ask the, the patient to move their head so that we can get better direct vision to the mouth. Again, we can avoid using the mirror. So we can actually see quite a lot of the mouth without actually using the mirror. However, when we're working on the occlusal surfaces of the posterior teeth, particularly the upper teeth, then we have to work with a mirror. The tendency, though, at first is to avoid this stage and to get into bad habits, which will have a bad effect on our posture. If we're looking at the occlusal surfaces of the upper teeth, then we can actually get the mirror and the light adjusted so that the light reflects onto the tooth and we can see it clearly. By doing this, we can actually sit back, maintain our posture, and be comfortable in the dentist's chair. At the same time, we want, if we're doing operative dentistry, we want to be using good finger rests as well. If we're just using a probe around the mouth, then we can use a finger rest at the front to actually support what we're doing. However, if we were using a drill, then we'd want to actually use a finger rest that is adjacent to the tooth, um, either on the buccal or the palatal surface. The closer the finger rest is to the tooth that we're working on, the more skillful we'll be. The tendency, though, is that we always want to lean forward and get a better look at what, we, what we're working on. And this is something that you consciously have to prevent yourself from doing. When we're working with a mirror, there are a couple of very useful techniques which allow you to maintain good vision. The first of these is that when we're actually looking at the occlusal surfaces of upper teeth, uh, and we have to use the mirror, particularly when we're drilling, there's a tendency for the mirror to get sprayed with water. And that means that our usual uh, response is to actually move the mirror away and try and maintain direct vision. And of course you can see that what I'm doing now is I'm leaning forward and uh, that's going to put more stress on my lower back. It's possible to actually hold the mirror at, a perf at the right angle and to move the, the mirror out to the corner of the mouth and maintain the image of the tooth in the mirror. I can see the occlusal surface of the upper first molar completely clearly and if I were using a drill that would prevent the water spray from going over the tooth. It also gives the assistant, uh, the dental nurse, uh, a lot more access to the mouth so that uh, to use a suction and this is a very very useful technique that we can do because it allows us to sit back and relax, work on the mirror uh, and uh, also see what we're doing. The other useful technique is that when we're looking at the lingual surfaces of the lower teeth, the tongue is liable to get in the way. In these situations, we can use the mirror to give ourselves some vision, but also to use it to retract the tongue. 
If we actively try and pull the tongue out of the way, the patient is usually going to respond by pushing against the mirror and it's going to cause a lot of stress. So in these situations, what you need to do is you need to hold the top of the handle of the mirror and place it on the lingual surface of the lower teeth against the tongue. And then just lean it backwards against the tongue. You don't actually have to push the tongue too far. What this does is it brings the lingual surfaces of the lower teeth into my line of sight whilst protecting the tongue and keeping out of the way. And obviously if we were going to drill these teeth, for example if we were doing a crown preparation, then we'd want to make sure that the tongue was safely out of the way and avoid damage. There's always a tendency to want to see more in the mouth and again the problem with that is that we tend to lean forward uh, so that we can get, make, see more of the tooth. One useful way to avoid this is the use of magnification loops. Magnification loops are useful because they allow us, obviously they magnify the image so that we can see more of what we're doing, which is always handy. But also they have a fixed focal distance. So if you uh, were to move forward using loops, then the image would go out of focus. So one of the advantages of loops in terms of posture is that they force you to sit back and upright, whilst at the same time increasing the magnification of the image.